when you dive into the world of electronics pretty quickly you will bottleneck for power by using batteries batteries are great when you are finishing your project but not so great when you are prototyping you can alternatively use power adapters but all of them don't have a pretty good current rating this is the reason most of the professionals have a bench power supply where you can get a stable current control and many other features so in this video we will build a cost effective power supply with an enormous amount of current output using a atx power supply i know there are already hundreds of videos making the same power supply but few are quite dangerous to use because of the way they are built within the case this video will go through a different approach for building this power supply mostly on building a safer case and how you can use it safely so without any further delay let's get started we might have a lot of old techs we might be upgrading and one of those can be your pc instead of just giving it away for recycling you can use the smps from your pc to build this cool looking power supply for your future projects if you are using a used smps the cost of the whole build will be significantly low because the other parts won't cost you much let's see what's the advantage of smps if you want to step down and regulate an ac power supply to dc we can go with transformers with the different turns of coil in primary and secondary we can achieve the voltage we need this would be perfect for minimal current rated devices but when you need a large current the size of the transformer gets quickly large and cumbersome to use this is the case we are going to use the smps smps stand for switch mode power supply it's small compact high current rating and stable voltage now we'll see how this works in short first the rectifier circuit which converts ac to dc then this is fed to a high frequency transistor switch this high frequency transistor connected to a high frequency pwm generator the duty cycle of the pwm generator varied according to the required voltage now to maintain this voltage constant there will be a feedback from output to the pwm generator since we know the basics we'll see how we can use the smps there are two types of smps one with 20 and 24 pins connectors the working principle is same for both but they have a different number of pins in their output i have a 24 pin connector but with a twist the working is same for almost all the smps but if you have a power supply like mine with a few different colors then you might need to add a few extra steps if you see the size of smps you can see the rating of your smps and accordingly you can plan your circuit first let's open up the smps while opening up the supply make sure there is no standby light this would be glowing even when the ac power is disconnected and then make sure you have no contact with any of the capacitor and the high voltage side they might have some deadly charges stored in it for now let's get rid of the fan once the smps is torn apart use a blower to clean the dust you can see there are bunch of wires of different colors At first it might be scary but don't worry we won't be using all of them so i'll cut the unwanted wires and use plenty of heat shrinks to avoid short circuit you can see the chart for the color code red is plus 5 volt orange is plus 3.3 volt yellow is plus 12 volt blue is minus 12 volt gray power good line purple standby line pink 5 volt sense line brown 3.3 volt sense line green is power on signal line and finally black for common ground once you have found all the wires you can separate them i have taken few 5 volts wire 3.3 volt and plus 12 volt lines and a bunch of ground and heat shrink all the trimmed wires like before you have to follow the following steps only if you have sense lines in your smps or you can just skip this part connect the pink sense line to red wire and brown sense line to orange wire and solder them securely most of the smps power supply need a dummy load to start correctly a few smps might work without it we'll go with the dummy load so i used a 20 ohms 10 watt between the plus 5 volt and ground and used plenty of soldering and secured them with heat shrinks then find a place where you can place it inside the smps without any contact with any other electronics Now to test this connect the green wire to ground and power on the SMPS with AC supply 
After turning on, if you check the voltage across the grey wire, you should have plus 5 volt. This is the power good line, which tells the SMPS is working without any problem. Now, if you check the purple wire, you should have the same plus 5 volt, which is standby line. To understand how it works, let's remove the green wire from the ground. And now if you check the power good line, we should have 0 volts and purple standby line with 5 volts. The purple wire will always be on plus 5 volts when connected to AC supply. This is why you can use your USB port in your PC without turning it on. These lines can be used with LEDs to indicate the status of our power supply. Now we know how the power supply works so we can start building the case. First, I measured the size of the components and roughly designed a model in Fusion 360 to get an idea how the finished model may look like and made the necessary holes for the components. For this video, I am going to use this plywood. First, I measured the required dimension using the SMPS and marked it in the plywood. Then cut the wood according to the design. You can see I am pretty bad at woodwork and I don't have any proper tools to have a smooth finish. But I am proud how this finally turned out to be after the first try. Once the cutting is done, sand the edges and make them smooth. The next step is painting. I am going to use this matte black spray paint. And if you need the same one, you can check the link in the description. I tried my best to give an even coat on all the parts. Once that's done, they look super good. You can make this even more interesting by using different tone colors. Now assembling the parts. There are so many ways to put this together. Since I am using plywood, the best way would be to go with clamps. First, let's fix the SMPS in the base. Then add the back panel. Then add the top panel. Once that done, add the fan with a PC fan guard. Now add the voltmeter, rotary switch and the switch in the inclining front panel. Then add the red and black terminal for plus 3.3V, plus 5V and plus 12V in the front panel. And prepare it for docking on the mainframe. For detailed connection, you can download the circuit diagram from the link in the description. You can see throughout the connection video, I tried my best to avoid any exposed copper area either by masking them with hot glue or heat shrink or by trimming the unnecessary wires. Before completely soldering them together, I fixed the USB to the standby wire and ground to ground. As, and as a final touch, I added a LED with a 470 ohm resistor and enclosed with a heat shrink. This LED was used in power good line and similarly, I made another LED for the standby wire. After soldering all the components and double check for the exposed copper area and secure them. Then give it a run, check if everything works as expected. Since it's working, close the front panel and find place where you can secure the wires. Now comes the complicated part. How to close the device entirely just using the clamps. Luckily, I found a clamp with the threads. So we don't need the counterpart to hold the nut in place. Just screw them in. And that's it. Just power on the SMPS and you got yourself a gorgeous looking DIY ATX power supply. This features a 3 different voltage selection between 3.3V, 5V and 12V and all of them provide the current mentioned in the SMPS power supply. Now you can run various load on this power supply without any worries. If you like the video, hit the like button and you can also comment down any other project you like to see on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video.
you can also support this channel by sharing the content with someone who is interested and feel free to follow me on instagram and check out my blog for the written version of the videos i make so that's it for this video you can watch other exciting videos from the link on the screen